Hey there, I wanna help you with your forehand, specifically your forehand footwork because players out there are making huge mistakes on their footwork and they don't even realize it. And even if they do realize it, they're not making the necessary corrections. So let's get into that right now. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. And I'm absolutely committed to helping players understand their technique, their footwork, their strategy, their mental game, even be able to prevent injuries. And in today's lesson, we're gonna focus on forehand footwork. And I'm gonna give you a number of scenarios that I believe can help you. And so what I wanna do right now is I wanna go back to the baseline and I wanna show you some of the problems that I'm seeing players have. And you're gonna get a clear understanding by the end of this video. So you're gonna to wanna to watch the entire video to really understand what I'm teaching with the forehand. And before we get started, make sure that you smash that like button, you subscribe to the channel, and you turn on your notifications so you can get updated on all the latest lessons. Let's get started with this forehand lesson right now. All right, we're on the baseline right now. We're gonna show you different types of forehands, the stances, the footwork, where players are messing up. And let's start with the forehand in the middle of the court. So I'm gonna shift over here now. And I see a lot of players, when the ball comes through the middle of the court, they're still hitting off their back foot and falling off the ball. And these are balls where they really should be stepping in. The ball is actually in the strike zone, right at the waist, and still I'm seeing people set up with an open stance. I don't know why coaches and players have become fixated on this pro style advanced type of footwork, you know, the modern game where all of a sudden now everybody is open, semi-open. When that ball is in your strike zone and it's in front of you and you have time, you should be on your front foot and you should be squaring up, full stop. There's a great video of Tommy Haas, retired. He got to two in the world. I played him twice in Memphis. He beat me once, four in the third. Another time he beat me four and four. Heck of a player, what a talent. Without the injuries, maybe he would have been number one in the world, won a few slams. But the video is showing him doing exactly what I just demoed. He's committing to the front foot. And I also remember many times when I played my worst tennis, I was hitting too much off the, uh, off the, off the outside leg, hitting open stance. And in the matches, I would say, okay, just be like Jimmy Connors, get on your front foot and be aggressive. And that mindset allowed me to attack the ball on my front foot. So if you have a tendency to just stand in the middle of the court, let the ball come to you and hit open stance, you've got to commit to changing that habit. And again, the easiest way to do it is tell yourself, step in on every ball, drive through the ball, step in, get on your front foot, work the front foot, work the feet. We want to avoid making that mistake. Now, when would be a good time to actually hit off of the outside leg or hit into more of an open stance? Well, it's very simple, when the ball is higher. And this is one reason you see the pros hit with more open stance or semi-open. When the ball gets up and jumps with a lot of topspin and the ball is up around the shoulder, you want to work on loading and rotating to the other leg. So this is something that you can practice that when the ball's in your strike zone, you step in. When the ball is higher, you're gonna go more open stance. So the height of the ball will determine whether you step in or whether you open up your stance. It's a really simple way to understand that. If the ball is lower and it's right at you, front foot, you can use a Karaoke. If the ball is in your strike zone, step in front foot. If the ball gets up high, open up your stance. When would be another time that you would open up your stance? What happens if the ball comes really fast? This is where, again, I see players doing the opposite of what they should be doing. The ball comes fast and I see them step in like this and they get jammed and they get too close to the ball. Actually, when the ball comes fast, you wanna keep your stance open, keep your hips facing. I've seen Federer and others do this a lot. When the ball comes fast, and it's pushing you back. Watch, do you see what I just did? I swung and I rotated my body 
Why is that a good thing to do? Because it creates space around the, away from the ball. If I just step in, the ball's coming on me. So I, t I talk about taking the pitch or absorbing the ball. When the ball comes fast, you go back from your outside leg to your inside leg and you're not stepping in. So that's another advanced example a lot of players are messing up on. So, so far we've talked about if the ball's in your strike zone like this, I'm seeing people hit too much open stance. When the ball comes high, I'm seeing people step in instead of opening the stance. When the ball comes fast and low, I'm seeing people step in instead of going back like that. So a lot of times it's the opposite footwork of what people are actually doing. That is what I've observed and that's what I've noticed over the years. Now what about when you get pushed wider? I see pros even still doing this and I don't think they should be. They get away with it because they're uber talented. But I see too many players running over and stepping in like this, stepping across. Of course, when you move out wide, you want to open up your stance. You don't want to step in on a ball going across the court. Again, you'll see some pros doing this. And the way they get themselves out of it is that when they step in, they square up properly. A lot of players in the club, club player world, junior players, they go over and step in and they stop. They don't square up. They don't know how to square up. They don't bring their leg around at the right time. You have to bring the leg around after contact, not at the same time. But things would get a lot simpler if you knew that when the ball comes wide, don't take extra steps and step across. Take one big step, load, and keep your stance open. Again, another example of where I see players stepping in on this ball when they should be open. And then when they're in the middle, they should be stepping in and they go open. Lots of mistakes being made with footwork out there. Tennis is a dance. And if you understand how to move and what footwork to use in different parts of the court, then you can actually become efficient at moving and at playing this game. You'll conserve energy, you'll recover faster, you'll hit the ball harder, you'll be more consistent. There's not enough emphasis on footwork and movement. So if there's one takeaway you get from this lesson today is that when the ball comes in the middle of the court in your strike zone, just step in. Okay, just step in. Don't wait for the ball. Don't let it come to you. Don't stand back here and do this stuff. Too many juniors are doing this. Get on your front foot. Now, there's a caveat. If you're stepping in and stepping across and blocking yourself, we might have to open up your stance a little bit to get used to it. But I'm a big proponent that you still step in, but when you step, look where my foot goes on the forehand. It comes this way instead of this way. If you're stepping across like this, you probably don't have a great understanding of spacing, coiling, and turning. So when you step in, you're gonna step in this fashion and then square up. Now, this lesson on footwork on the baseline for your forehand was an absolute blast to make. I love teaching this stuff. I love helping, helping players get to the next level. And if you got value out of it, please smash that like button. It'll, it'll help us share this video with others. Share this video with others. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. And before you go today, if you resonate with my teaching, if you believe I can help you with more lessons like these, you can sign up for our free membership. And all you have to do is click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video. We'll get you access to a number of lessons that'll help you with your technique, more footwork, strategy, mental toughness, injury prevention. It's all there for you to accelerate your results and have more fun at the game that you love. So thanks for your time today. Click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video and we'll see you at the next lesson.